that are like safer and manageable. And if you know everyone who's using what you're making, then you can you can solve the problems before someone breaks it. And like you know, you don't put you don't you don't want to put it out there, have other people hack it, and then it starts becoming a nightmare to deal with. But if you're building internal tools, you have a higher bar, and you can kind of like internally break things, and that's fine because you're you know who's using it, and you get that feedback. So I think that even when you're building code generation, like using code generation, there's this like lower risk thing, which is build things for your organization and then take those learnings. And then you make the next, like maybe your 15th idea, you might be like, okay, let's make this for people, right? Make this more externally facing. And, and it might not even be an application that reaches the other people. It might be like the output of gener like it might be generative media, right? It might be a video. It might be yeah, it might be a video. It might be like a speech translated into 25 languages. So the output of the model can still be be made externally um, available. And I think that you learn, you, you want to learn things and you don't necessarily have to build and launch an app to learn things. You can also learn things by just making, making tools for like your first customers are just like your own teammates and you, right? And then, uh, and then if it's useful, you might find that there are other teams that you can, you can partner with. So I, I do like branch out into the broader network and talk to some of the the firms in our network. And it's like, here's how we're using the tools. Um, and then I, and then it, my big recommendation is everyone should have like a vibe coder in house, <laughs> you know, like, because we're kind of getting to a place. I think that it is easier and faster to buy, to build software than to buy it. And I met Amjad in, uh, from Replit in, in San Francisco. And I mentioned this to him. I said, I have a feeling that buy versus build has flipped. It, it used to be traditionally, it's like, if it's not core to your business, just buy the software and then move on. But now it's like, you know, you can tell AI to make the version of the, the application that you need, and you don't get all the extra features you don't use. And you're not paying for a two year subscription to some overly like one size fits all solution. Now you can just make custom software. And maybe that's just like my my bias because I love generating code, but I love this this world we're getting into where I can just sit down with Claude Code or Cursor and just be like, hey, let's make this. And then two hours later, I have it. And I don't have to talk to a sales rep. I don't have to negotiate a two-year contract. This is something that's very interesting. And I think it's going to be very disruptive, the the like personal software uh, era. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking actually the same. I mean, people will stop buying software outside because they can internally, you know, vibe code to. And yeah. also, if you hire a vibe coder, and it's much cheaper, right, than paying a millions of bucks every year to external software. 